This is my newest horn in my collection, and it is, as uh, what would they say? It's a beauty clock. It's a beauty clock. This horn is an absolute stunner in both the way it plays and obviously the looks. So stay tuned to this video. I'll tell you all about this unicorn, really, this very rare Martin handcraft imperial cornet. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, it's Trent Austin from Austin Custom Brass. I hope you're having an awesome 4th of July weekend. Um, it's actually the 5th of July, and yeah, everything's closed, but I'm here at work trying to get some work done and do some of these videos. Again, thanks so much for your great support of the shop. We simply couldn't do it without you. Um, if you have a suggestion for a future uh, mini lesson or show and tell, please post them in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. This horn is the newest one in my collection, and as you know, I have a pretty strict rule in my own personal collection. Well, I know all these horns are technically property of ACV. Um, I have a rule for my collection at home, which is every time I get a horn in, one must go. And this horn just came in, uh, and I'm actually getting another horn from my friend uh, Josh Landris, which I'm super excited about. So be sure to check out the TA collection, which will be in the video description that will show you a lot of my goodies that I'm selling. There's some really amazing things there. So um, big thanks first and foremost to my friend Rob Stewart, who is arguably the best repair and restoration tech in the world. I have never seen better work than what I've gotten uh, received from Rob. This horn was literally a lamp. Now, it wasn't like um, tied up with uh, you know an electrical cord, but it could have easily been a lamp at go to Cracker Barrel and it's hanging on the wall, right? This horn is super rare. Um, we've had uh, Martin Handcraft Imperial trumpets in the shop. You know they're some of my favorites. I actually just sold one of my favorite horns in my collection. Um, uh, we have had Handcraft Imperial cornets in the shop. I think we actually have a Handcraft Standard still for sale. Uh, it's quite a nice player. This horn I've never seen. Handcraft Imperial cornets are very rare. Just then they didn't make many of them. The bottom sprung version, which is this is from 1937. That's why you can see the 37 in the bell. Some people go, oh, well, that's a different bell shape. No, you know, it, the lion in the later versions holds an M. It, it never, uh, the 37 is just indicative of the year it was manufactured. Anyways, two things on this horn that make this very unique. First and foremost, you have the number three bore. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. Number three bore, which indicates the large step bore. If this was a trumpet, it would be worth uh, five, six thousand dollars probably, no doubt. Uh, that's how rare they are. The probably the rarest horn in all vintage trumpets is the three bore handcraft committee. That's the same model and make that uh, uh, Chris Bodie plays. Beautiful sounding trumpet. The second thing that makes this totally original and rare and I've never seen. It's a solid nickel bell. Um, now, I've had another Martin Handcraft with the nickel bell, but it was the more popular or more prevalent two bore, which is a medium step bore. So I've never had both. That's why I had to have this restored. And I spent the price of a new trumpet uh, and a new, a good new trumpet uh, having Rob do the restoration. But the, but the result is just tremendous. This horn is I'm, I'm sure it's better than new from the factory. We'll put a link up in uh, the cards to a slideshow so you can see pictures that Patrick took of this horn. It's just stunning, gorgeous. It's a two-piece nickel bell. So you can see the flare probably. You see how the seam is right there? Um, and then one really cool thing is check out how the, the flare actually is a seamed uh, part as well. 
I only think Martin did that. That's really labor intensive. And speaking of labor intensive, when I sent this horn to Rob, uh, its lead, the original lead pipe was completely rotted out. There's no way you could save it. Um, he manufactured by hand, by scratch, a nickel pipe. Unbelievable work. So again, Rob, if you're watching this video, you're the man. Thank you so much. Uh, this is a horn that's going to be very treasured in my collection. Those are, um, he said, hey man, why don't you play it? Um, there's a couple things that I don't actually like about it, and I'll tell you right before I start playing. Um, one, the valves are really close to each other. It's a very vintage -y design. I'm used to my wider position on my Adams instruments, like my Copernicus. So that's going to take a little bit of an acclimation to. I'm going to take this horn on an upcoming vacation, and uh, hopefully I'll get a little bit more used to it. The other thing, it's got nickel, uh, metal guides, and they're built into the, the valve, so um, it's a little noisy. Um, but then I think about all of my friends who play saxophone, and they have pretty loud setups. So what do you think in the comments? Do you think that's too much? Just let me know. In the meantime, this horn is not necessarily a true British brass band cornet. It has, you know, the American style uh, crook design. I think this horn is kind of like, it really is like a chameleon horn. So if I play it with this mouthpiece, which is our, our, our cornet C cup, it has a nice rich sound. Here's Charlie A2 for you. has a really a creaminess and you would think it wouldn't because nickel can be very bright but I think the nickel keeps the the tone really centered and full and rich um, which is great you see a lot of horns with nickel flares uh, Adams makes a flute horn with nickel flares Olds made a lot of horns with nickel flares like in their studio models um, so nickels nickels an interesting it's almost like sterling where you either really like it or you don't like it and I like sterling and I like nickel as well this is a deeper mouthpiece based on one of Hokan's uh, Toshi mouthpieces um, that he uses for cornet. And I'll play a little bit of uh, Charlie A6 for you. These are all these clips you hear from our shop. For the most part, I would say 95% of them are completely raw and unedited, so you're getting a pretty accurate uh, sound color shape. Uh, what do you think? Post them in the comments here. I really, really, really love the, the way this horn plays. And it's, it's that large step board, but because it's a cornet and the cornet has all this additional wrap to it, I feel like the larger board compensates for all of those extra curves, which can cause a little bit more uh, turbulence in the horn, we'll say. So I think it's a really beautiful balance. And the trigger, this trigger is so great. Again, Rob, you did an amazing job. And I just love the wrap, how they make that. So eat your heart out, hearts out like to the Pudgy and the Copernicus, these you know more unique modern designs. Ain't got nothing on a vintage horn design. So let's play some bebop on this.
awesome horn. And we'll play a little trad on it. So yeah, again, super fun, amazing horn. Thank you, Rob. Uh, not for sale, but we do have a standard in stock. We'll put a link uh, for that horn. You can buy that one and have fun with it as well. Take a moment, hit that subscribe button, wherever it might be. We're so thankful for you. Stay safe this summer, and uh, we'll be back soon. Cheers, everybody.